Different companies and industries have their own standards for layers. Each layer assigns a color, line type, and line weight to a group of similar features. In this exercise, we will create and apply layers to the landscape drawing that you see on the screen here. If I go to the Layers panel on the ribbon, there are currently no layers created, only the default zero layer. To create layers, I can go to the Layer Property Manager by clicking on the button up on the Layer panel here, or by typing in Layers or LA, the command alias. To create a new layer, I can hit the Layer States Manager, or the rather the New Layer button here. Looks like a sheet of paper with a little star. And then I can type in the name of that layer. My first layer will be brick. If I hit enter once, it will accept that new layer, and a second time will create a new layer. I'll enter concrete, concrete, enter, and if you spell something wrong, you can single click with your pointer and then go in and make that edit. Next layer is flagstone, flag stone followed by hatch property line rose bushes rr ties structure Structure. And finally, trees. So I've created the 10 layers, at least the names. I now need to enter the color, the line type, and the line weight for each of those layers. The brick layer is color 12, and I can just type that in on the index tab of the Select Color dialog box. The concrete layer has a white color. The flagstone has a goldish color, which is color 42. Here again, I'll type in 42 from the index color tab on the select color dialog box. The hatch is white. The property line is magenta, which is a purple color down at the bottom here. Rose bushes are green. The uh, railroad ties are color 17, kind of a kind of a dark brown. I'll just enter 17, and I can hit enter to ex to uh, accept that color. Structure is color 255, which is basically white, and the trees or color 94, which is a darker green. Notice that there's two other tabs here, the True Colors tab, which has access to literally millions of combinations of colors, and the Color Books tab, which allows you to select colors from books that are used by standard uh, paint manufacturers and other in interior design and other fields. Next, I will enter the line types, which for the most case are continuous lines, that is, lines that have no breaks in them. The only change I need to make here is with the property line layer, which is a phantom line. And <clears throat> there's no phantom line that's been loaded yet in the select line type dialog box, so I need to click on the load button to load that phantom line from among the selection of available line types. I'm going to select the phantom line here. I'll say OK, and then I'll select it again to apply it to the property line layer. And you can see that change in the line type column. Next, I'll enter the line weights. The brick layer 
has a line weight of 0.25 millimeters, which is quite small. If you remember the mechanical pencils that you've probably used, either currently or in the past, standard sizes are 0.5 to 0.7 millimeters. 0.25 being half that is, a, is quite a thin line. The concrete layer is a little thicker at 0.3 millimeters. The flagstone is 0.25, also quite thin. The hatch layer is default. And the phantom, or the property line, with the phantom line type is the thickest of all of them at 0.7 and you want that object to stand out that that property line to stand out from the rest of the lines and that thicker line weight does that for you the rose bushes are 0.25 the railroad ties are 0.5 also a nice uh, thick line which will stand out when printed. Structure is 0.5 and finally the trees layer are 0.4, a little bit, a little bit thinner. We've now completed the creation of the layers with their respective color, line type, and line weight. I'm going to go ahead and close the Layers Property Manager. We can see those new layers up in the drop-down on the Layers panel. We can also use this drop-down to select the current layer. And currently, uh, the default layer, the zero layer, is the current layer. I could make the property line the current layer you see it there and then when I go to draw a property line just as an example you see it has that purple color now it appears to be a thin line because the show hide button at the status bar is currently off if I turn that on this line should get thicker to show its 0.7 millimeter line weight and it does. By toggling that on and off I can see if my layers and line weights are applied correctly. Now I do not see the phantom line type that I entered and the reason for that has to do with the line type scale. If I type in the command alias for line type scale, LTS, it reveals that the current line type scale is point or is one. This is a very large drawing with a large drawing area and limits. Uh, so I'm going to have to scale up my line type scale. The scale of this drawing is actually 240 to one. To calculate the line type scale, I just divide the scale by 2. So 240 divided by 2 is 120. I'll hit enter and you can immediately see that the property line uh, phantom line type now shows up. And if I if I turn off my line weight it's it's even more clear. You can experiment with the LTS on your own by typing in LTS and changing the line type scale. Now I want to apply the layers that I created to what I have completed of my landscape drawing so far. I want to select the site and put it on the layer that's titled property line. So I'll do that. It looks very good. I'll go ahead and delete that practice line. And then I want to put the structure that I created here with the polyline onto the structure layer. I'm not sure if it worked or not. I can verify it by 
clicking on the show hide button at the status bar again and it did indeed put my polylines onto the structure layer I can see that by the thickness of the line weight which if you recall was 0.5 millimeters I've now completed the creation and the application of my layers colors line weights and line types for my landscape drawing and I will use these in the future